കരുണാർണവമായി കരുതഗതി നൽകും അരുണാചല ശിവം ഈദ Namaste. So we're going to pick up where we left off with Drig Drishya Vivekaha, huh? the bringer of great bliss to the yogis who can understand and practice it. So we're going to begin with text 22. Udeksha nama rupe dve sajjidananda tatparaha. സമാധിങ് സാർവദാ കുറിയാ ദുഹൃദയേ വാതവാപി ഹാവിങ് ബിക്കം ഇൻ ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് ടു നെയിം ആൻഡ് ഫോം ആൻഡ് ബീങ് ഡിവോട്ടഡ് ടു സച്ചിരാനന്ദ വൺ ഷുഡ് ഓൾവേസ് പ്രാക്ടീസ് കോൺസെൻട്രേഷൻ ഇതർ വിദിൻ ദ ഹാർട്ട് ഓർ ഔട്ട്സൈഡ് ടെക്സ് ട്വൻറ്റി ത്രീ സവിക്കൽപേ നിർവിക്കൽപ സമാധിർദ്വിവിധോ ഹൃദയ ദൃശ്യശബ്ദാനുവേദേന സാവിക്കൽപ പുനാർദ്വിധ ടു കൈൻസ് ഓഫ് സമാധി ടു ബി പ്രാക്ടീസ്ഡ് ഇൻ ദ ഹാർട്ട് വിദിൻ വൺ സെൽഫ് ആർ നോൺ ആസ് സാവിക്കൽപ ആൻഡ് നിർവിക്കൽപ സാവിക്കൽപ സമാധി ഇസ് അഗൈൻ ഡിവൈഡ് ഇൻ ടു ടു ക്ലാസ്സസ് അക്കോർഡിംഗ് ടു ഇറ്റ്സ് അസോസിയേഷൻ വിത്ത് എ കോഗ്നൈസബിൾ ഓബ്ജെക്ട് ഓർ സൗണ്ട് as an object so first of all one should be convinced that the ultimate the absolute the root of all existence the ground of being is not to be found in the realm of name and form one should be very convinced of this philosophically logically and also by experience huh? by seeing that any time one's consciousness is associated with name and form there is suffering it's never perfect it's always dissatisfying unsatisfactory dukkha so as soon as we really understand that technically we're liberated now some people will take advantage of this and say well then all i have to do is believe this and that's it i'm done huh i got my moksha <laughs> but we observe in these people that actually they're not done they are still attached to name and form they still have a uh, ego investment in the body and those things associated with the body so they don't actually have moksha but they're certainly on the path so then what is necessary to complete the moksha and that is samadhi samadhi means one pointedness of the mind sama dhi huh? so when the mind is fixed on one point this is meditation and when that concentrated point becomes the exclusive focus of the mind that is samadhi so in the beginning of samadhi there is still some awareness of the duality between the seer and the seen and this is called savikalpa vikalpa means thoughts in general and discriminative thoughts in particular so at the beginning of meditation one still thinks i <laughs> am meditating on this <laughs> and the object of meditation can be either within or outside uh sometimes people meditate on a color uh you sometimes see buddhist monks holding a a, a thing like a shield in front and what this is 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 a meditation device to meditate on a particular color so one may also meditate on a deity or for example the shri chakra the shri yantra huh or one may visualize such a form 
within the mind. That's a little a more advanced stage. Or one may uh, hear a sound, like a mantra. Sound is a very powerful form of meditation because it naturally leads within. So the object of meditation may be outside in the beginning, but over time we want it to become internal. But this is still savikalpa samadhi. Well, how does it become nirvikalpa? When all thoughts cease, when there is no more awareness of the subject-object duality, when there is no more awareness of oneself as a separate entity, and one's mind becomes completely merged in the object of meditation. So when the mind becomes merged in Brahman, this satisfies all the requirements. Huh? Now, how does one merge the mind in Brahman? Well, first of all, one can conceive of Brahman as Satchit Ananda. Satchit Ananda means eternal existence, uh, perfect consciousness, all-pervading consciousness, and bliss. Unmixed bliss. Huh? And this is a state where one is aware only of the self. Now, when the mind has been purified by mantras, by puja, by karma yoga, by seva, by worship, uh, by like fasting and other austerities, uh, sitting for long periods of time in concentration, and so on, one begins to see light in the mind. Now, this is very pleasant. Uh, we went over this in the series on the secret of the golden flower. How this light is not actually seeing Brahman, but what it is, is you're seeing Brahman reflected in the purified mind. It's like looking into a mirror. What you see in the mirror is nothing but your face, <laughs> but it's not your face. <laughs> it's a reflection. Still, there's a very powerful meditation method, which is that one, uh, seeing this light, thinks, oh, Brahman is looking at me. So this is, again, this is a transitionary state from the external to the internal meditation, because it still uh, thinks of the self as uh, an object. So there's a subject-object duality. But still, this is a very high state, and it's distinguished by the quality of bliss. When you're seeing this light within, and when you're concentrating on it, and knowing that actually this is myself, this is my real self, Satchit Ananda, being reflected in the purified mind. This gives rise to a certain quality of bliss that's it's really hard to uh, explain. It has to be experienced for oneself. Because in this bliss, there's nothing but oneself. And yet, everything is there, complete. <laughs> like I say, it's hard to explain. So in this bliss, there is no distinction between the feeling of I am and the perception of Satchit Ananda, Brahma. So at this point, when the ego drops completely, there's no more duality, no more conception of oneself as different from Brahman. Now, this is the beginning of Nirvikalpa Samadhi. The Nirvikalpa Samadhi can get very, very deep, and it should. It should absorb our attention of our consciousness completely. In fact, there should be more, no more consciousness. And when this is complete, this is called nirvana. Uh, nirvana means no more uh, existence of the outside world, 
The world disappears like it does in deep sleep. No dreams even. Uh, but the difference is that in deep sleep, one is covered by ignorance and there's nothing to be seen. But in samadhi, one sees the self or actually one becomes, well, or be, <laughs> becomes aware that one is the self. So in this state, at that point, then moksha is complete. One becomes a, a living, liberated soul, jivan mukta, um, even still in the body, but not connected to anything outside. So jivan mukta means, it doesn't mean that, you know, one can uh, perform mystic tricks like flying in the air or reading people's minds <laughs> or miracles. Huh? People get this distorted idea that liberation automatically grants mystic powers. Well, it may or may not, depending on the person's karma. If a person has the requisite, the, the prerequisites for mystic powers, they'll manifest. And if they don't, it's not a big deal. The point is the non-dual consciousness. When the non-dual consciousness manifests, then there's no more sorrow, no more suffering, no more cares for the world. Uh, to care for the world is to suffer because then one has to take birth. One has to be in a body with senses to experience it. See, it's a package deal. Huh? Duality between the seer and the seen. Having a mind, an ego, a body and senses, and being in a world is all one thing. Huh? Try to understand. <laughs> Saguna Brahman. The world is Saguna Brahman or Shakti, the mother. And although if one is aware of her as a, a feature of Brahman, this is a very exalted state. Still, it is inferior to complete liberation. But what we have observed and also practiced is that to worship the mother as Saguna Brahman leads to revealing the Nirguna Brahman. Now, how is that? Well, it's because Shakti has, she's driven to unite with Shiva. We've talked about this extensively in our series on the Lalita Sahasrana. We're going to talk about it more when we resume that series. But basically, the Kundalini Shakti is situated at the Muladhara Chakra, at the base of the spine. And when the chakras open up, when the mind becomes purified, then she rises to unite with Shiva as Nirguna Brahman in the Sahasrara. Now, she rises naturally as soon as we get out of the way. <laughs> so when one becomes purified by worship of Saguna Brahman, the mother, this automatically then leads us to Nirguna Brahman because that is her tendency. She wants to unite with Shiva. The yin wants to meet the yang. So when she moves towards Shiva, she takes us with her. And this brings us to the feet of Shiva. And then at, at that point, we can attain Samadhi and Moksha uh, and experience the greatest bliss, which then once begun, never ceases, only becomes greater and greater. <laughs> until it's not possible to remain in the body anymore. And one goes completely internal, and at that time attains the greatest satisfaction and bliss that's possible. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. <laughs>